We begin the news, though, at 6 with a shocking story out of Fort Bend County, a minor accident on the road that leads to the murder of a U of H student. So very sad. Stefania Coley spoke exclusively with the victim's family. Now live with much more on who that student was and what investigators are calling an absolutely senseless crime. Stefania. And Gina, there really is no other way to describe this. It's the surveillance video that I saw, which we're unable to share, it's really within seconds that this driver gets out and fires at this U of H student. I counted six times that that gun went off. Today we learned more about 20-year-old Humphreys Migara and where, his, where he came from. His family says here to Houston to build a better life. Oh, it's very painful. I can't imagine. It's gone forever. Hard to imagine processing something like this, an innocent life taken over a car accident. Just a minor accident, the driver just come out and shoot my son like that. Deputies say 20-year-old Humphreys Maguira accidentally collided with a car here near Beechnut and Attic's Clothing. The accident was minor, but still, the driver of the other car decided to get out and shoot Humphreys several times. According to investigators, he was killed. I can't see my son again. <laughs> Like that. In Houston, Texas is where Josephine Kuyangana and her family came just eight years ago from Tanzania, seeking a better life, more opportunity. And that's exactly what Humphreys was finding, a graduate of Westside High School, a keen love for soccer, and now a sophomore at U of H studying computer engineering. This is my son. I love him. Never did it cross Josephine's mind she could lose her son in this manner. He was only about a mile or so from home, leaving to get a haircut. His mother had just seen him earlier that morning. I saw money, say, Mommy, see you later. But that moment never came. I can't believe, like, I can't see Afray again. I can't believe it. According to investigators, it was 19-year-old Victor Antonio Ramirez who took Humphrey's life, charged with murder, granted a $500,000 bond. Why even give him the opportunity to get out at all? Killed my brother for no reason senseless like pointless humphrey's family hopes to send his remains back to tanzania for his funeral they've set up a gofundme page to help with the process i'm svania coley abc 13 eyewitness news now to some breaking news and this is out of southeast houston police say a man was shot and killed on Connolly street that happened uh, about one o'clock today they believe a man shot one of his family members then ran from the scene we're still trying to gather the information and we'll have much more once we gather that information and there's more breaking news out of northeast houston sky Eye flying over the scene of another deadly shooting involving a family member this happened about 2 30 on sarah's lane Police say a woman shot and killed one of her family members and was arrested at that scene. There is no word at this point on the relationship between the shooter and the victim. Well, this just into the newsroom. We have new information now regarding the funeral arrangements for Precinct 4 Deputy Constable Kareem Adkins, who was shot and killed just days after coming back to work from paternity leave. His visitation is next Monday, October the 25th <coughs> at Champions Forest Baptist Church. It will be open to the public at 11 a.m. A funeral service will follow at 2 o'clock. Deputy Atkins will be buried at Klein Memorial Park Cemetery. And authorities are calling that shooting an ambush at the nightclub where he was shot and killed. It happened at the 45 Norte Bar and Lounge just off the North Freeway near Cross Timbers. ABC 13's Brooke Taylor spoke to a family friend of the victim. Deputy Kareem Atkins, this is where he was shot and killed over the weekend after responding to a disturbance call in this parking lot right here. Now, I've been in touch with his wife all day long. As you can imagine, really tough right now. She didn't want to speak just yet, but she put me in touch with a man who was like a father to her husband. He says this is a family man and he died doing what he loves, which is serving his community. And over here, a memorial is put right in this area where people have been coming to put things down in his honor. This picture is one of the last times Deputy Kareem Atkins would be seen holding his baby tightly in his hands. He was so happy. You know, he was he was truly what a father is. You know, he was he was excited about the newborn. He was he, uh, his little girl had just had her second birthday. Jimmy Vitella was like a father to 30 year old Kareem Atkins. Atkins was a deputy for Precinct 4 Constable's office since 2019. On Saturday, he was gunned down while working security for a bar. It was awful. I just I'd rather not talk about that right now. 
That's okay. Atkins moved to Houston from New York in his early 20s. One of his first jobs here was working for Vitella's car dealership. The two hit it off and quickly formed a close bond, spending holidays together and becoming family. Kind of took him under my wing and my wife. And he started calling his mom and dad. Atkins told Vitella his lifelong dream was to become an NYPD officer. So he wasn't too surprised when Atkins decided to pursue his passion as a deputy. I thought I talked him out of it. You know, I didn't. And so I just told him, you know, uh, please be careful. But those who knew Atkins knew his other love, which was his family. He had a two-year-old daughter and a six-month-old son. Vitella says he'll continue sharing Atkins' legacy. I will be there for my little grandbabies <laughs> to uh, make sure they know who their dad was and what a hero he was and how much he loved them. I'm Brooke Taylor, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, with so many reports of shootings over the weekend, we know it feels like crime is pretty much everywhere. So the 13 Investigates team took a look at dangerous crime countywide to find out what, if anything, is being done to drive down shootings and murders where it's worst. Here's Ted Oberg. Six of Rachel Allen's neighbors at this one Harris County apartment complex are victims of crime. We're including mine seven. Well, she is too. It's so bad she keeps cardboard on her windows to keep thieves away. People who live nearby tell us gunshots are heard almost every day. They both parked and started shooting at each other. We didn't pick this place by accident. Inside Harris County, this was the number one spot. That, that is, uh, <laughs> it's, that, that's wild. Do you think other people in Houston live this way? No. And the sheriff's office knows it. People deserve an opportunity to, to be safe. So what are they doing to fight crime in this hottest of hotspots? And what's the one thing that surprised us most during our time here? 13 Investigates tomorrow at 10. It is so disturbing. And speaking of shootings, one person is dead and several others are injured after an argument led to gunfire in Galveston earlier this morning. It happened along the Seawall Boulevard early this morning, about 4 a.m. Officers happened to be nearby that nearby. They drove and heard the gunshots to where the scene is. Police passed a dark colored SUV speeding away from that area. They pulled that driver over and realized two people inside had gunshot wounds. One person was detained, and as we said, one person found dead at the scene. Officers are still gathering the information. If you know anything about this shooting, call Galveston Police at 409-765-3770. Turning now to the very latest on the COVID-19 pandemic, and there is some good news to report today. The number of cases and hospitalizations continue to improve across the country. Although cases still remain high, with an average of about 85,000 new infections a day as of Sunday, they're still down by more than 8,000 from last week. As of Sunday, 57% of the total population has now been fully vaccinated against the virus. <coughs> Meantime, a CDC panel will meet this week on recommendations for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters, and if they sign off, those could be available by the end of the week. All right, let's talk about what everyone's talking about tonight, watching this so very closely. Yes, game three of the ACLS. It kicks off in less than an hour at this time. The Strohs right now, of course, uh, getting their back batting practice in over there in the Red Sox in their city, not ours. Yes, ABC 13 sports anchor Greg Bailey is in Boston now with the preview of tonight's big game. As we close in on the first pitch tonight, game three for the Astros and the Red Sox. One big surprise in the Astros lineup tonight. Jose Siri gets the start in center field. Dusty Baker with what I would call a bold move, putting in the 25-year-old Siri. What a remarkable rise to get to this point. Eight years in the minor leagues, four different organizations. The Astros think they really have something in Siri. They've harnessed the incredible raw skills that he has. Just 21 games this summer in the Astros lineup, but he did hit four home runs, impressed everybody with his work ethic and some of that home run power and speed. Dusty explaining his decision to go with Siri tonight in center field here in a tricky Fenway Park. You know, they got a huge right center field out there, and, uh, you know, he can cover the ground, and he can also uh, throw to stop. Uh, you from scoring on a double uh, from first base, uh, limit triples, plus the matchup, you know, 
he hits better against left-handers. Just everything pointed towards him starting today. Dusty Baker adds this after Jake Myers had that outfield collision game four in Chicago. Myers has made good progress. He could return to the Astros lineup as soon as tomorrow. At Fenway Park with the Astros, Greg Bailey, ABC 13 Eyewitness Sports.